there had been pressure building in the Senate around December, I think it was. I think Bernie Sanders had introduced a resolution that you don't need a law because there's already a law. That there has to be a certification by the Secretary of State that when the U.S. is sending military weapons, that they are not being used in a way that is a violation of international law. One of those things that is a violation of international law and also the subsequent law that the U.S. passed that restricts the sale of weapons to other countries is you cannot block U.S. humanitarian, humanitarian aid. Now, it is beyond obvious. I don't care if you're the greatest Israel Zionist supporter in the history of the world. The fact that the U.S. has to build a port. Yeah. The fact that the U.S. has to airdrop. Very unsafe for people, obviously. Humanitarian aid into Gaza is irrefutable evidence that Israel is preventing it from entering there because there are roads. <laughs> there are checkpoints that this um, aid could be flowing through. 500 trucks a day before this conflict started. And the Israelis are bragging about allowing 100 trucks here and there occasionally into Gaza. But every single person that we've interviewed on this program, every single expert who is on the ground there, there is no one other than the IDF yep. or the Israeli government that has said anything other than Israel is inhibiting aid. In fact, Biden said it in the State of the Union. Exactly. Blinken said it. Blinken was saying 100 percent last week, he said 100 percent of the people in Gaza are at the risk of starvation. And that is unacceptable. I'm paraphrasing, but he did say, uh, I think, uh, the 100 percent figure. And then within days, he comes around and says that this is not a violation of international law. I mean, the other thing that the State Department is doing here, which is just... I, 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 it is so despicable here. Do we have this Matthew Miller thing? Let's play this, if you don't mind, Sam. No. Because there's this uh, flagrant disrespect for international law here, where they're, don't believe your lying eyes, ears, our own intelligence reports, our own senators like Chris Van, Van Hollen that have gone there. Israel is not violating international law, so don't worry, we won't put some sort of padlock on the arms that we're selling to them. That's part of why they're saying this. And it also saves face for the United States, which could be com p potentially complicit in genocidal war crimes if they were to admit this in, in, in public. So let's be clear that there's also a self-interest self uh, involved in this. But this was Matt Miller being asked about this other, like, uh, action where the United States is thumbing its nose at international law, where the United Nations Security Council passed the ceasefire resolution, the United States abstained. It is unequivocal in the United Nations Charter that UN Security Council resolutions are binding, are binding under international law. And yet, um, fairly immediately after this, uh, the ceasefire was, proposal was passed, the United States is claiming that it is not binding, that it is just the United States and through through the negotiations where the authority can uh, 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 where the authority lies, which is placing yourself above the United Nations Charter, which is not the role that uh, the United States is supposed to be playing in international law. If you care about a rules based international order. So which we don't we don't. But this made this incredibly clear here. Come back to you. So, uh, resolution. You said that it's non-binding, but some others are also arguing that it is binding, like other several other UN Security Council resolutions. Has there been any, you know, uh, is there any ongoing discussion about about this at the UN between the US representatives and others? And then uh, also, you know, um, the I remember it was last November. The UN Security Council also adopted a resolution calling for extended and urgent humanitarian pauses and corridors in Gaza, uh, which was binding and which was rejected by Israel. 
like uh, several other UN Security Council resolutions in the past. So will the US in encourage Israel to comply with UN resolutions and international law? if Israel is not about the law. So with respect to the first re uh, resolution, it is our uh, interpretation of this resolution that it is non-binding. Um, and uh, for any detail on that, I would refer you to the office of our ambassador to the United Nations, who can, of course, speak in more detail of how we reached that conclusion. With respect to the other resolution, of course, we always expect all of our partner nations to comply with their national law. Uh, uh, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, so, of, yeah, of course. This is what's, I know that most, the average American doesn't really care about international law, but I find this to be a really uh, shocking display of arrogance from a Biden administration that said they were going to come into office and again, establish a rules-based international order, bring things back to normal. Um, so there, there have been now, within the past week or so, three complete middle fingers to the concept of international law from the from the United States State Department. The first one was last week, which we covered, which was this fake ceasefire resolution that they proposed, which in essence placed the United States and Israel authority and the negotiators authority over the United Nations Security Council by saying this is a ceasefire resolution that just in essence says we support the negotiations that lead to a ceasefire, essentially undercutting the enforcement authority of the United Nations Security Council, saying the buck stops actually with us. This is just an effort to say, rah, rah, here we go. Now, the second one is that instance there where Matt Miller uh, there is just denying the explicit uh, uh, language of the United Nations Charter, which says that Security Council resolutions are binding. This is unambiguous. Um, a, 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 a typical display of United States arrogance in the face of international law. And the third one is exactly what we just discussed, which is lying to the world and saying that the US, that, that Israel is in compliance with international law and is not blocking humanitarian aid in order to not put a padlock on any future arms sales to the to Israel from the United States. These are really provocative actions, in my view, on the world stage. And the Biden administration is not going to be uh, kindly looked upon in history. And I'm putting that mildly, obviously. Uh, here's Bernie Sanders responding to uh, the proclamation um, by um, Blinken that, quote, uh, or the State Department, we have not found them, meaning the Israelis, to be in violation either when it comes to the conduct of the war or the provision of humanitarian assistance. I mean, I, you know, like, it, what, what would be a violation of restricting humanity? Like, the literally, the preferred well, no, but I'm saying, like, them shooting down U.S. Uh, planes, dropping the aid? Maybe. Would that constitute it? Maybe. Or do you, would you need to, like, have, would you need to mine the waters off of Gaza so that if a U.S. ship came in there and blew it up? I mean, like, what would inhibit the humanitarian aid more than what Israel is doing? It's absurd. But here is uh, uh, Bernie Sanders. Um, this is the statement that he released. 32,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been killed, almost 75,000 injured, two-thirds of whom are women and children. Some 60% of the housing units have been damaged or destroyed, and almost all medical facilities have been made inoperable. Today, hundreds of thousands of Palestinian children are facing starvation because Netanyahu won't let in sufficient humanitarian aid, while thousands of trucks are waiting to get into Gaza. To pretend that Israel is not violating international law or interfering with U.S. humanitarian aid is absurd on its face. The State Department's position makes a mockery of U.S. law and assurances provided to Congress. It really is just stunning. And the Biden administration continues to delude itself that nobody cares. I mean, someone just uh, I am um, asking if uh, it didn't go uh, given voters' lack of interest in foreign policy and how quickly people move on to the next thing, how, mu how much do you think Israel-Gaza will be an issue in November? Again, like, first off, it's unclear to me when this gets resolved and by how. If the U.S. will not take this opportunity, and now it goes, the, the State Department has until May 8th to justify to the Senate. So that's another six weeks. Like, I cannot see... 
the inflection point, which is going to cause the Biden administration at this point to inhibit what Israel is doing. Maybe they've drawn some type of red line at, at Rafa. But it, it, it seems very difficult to sort of be able to point to some type of like trigger, which is going to change U.S. policy at this point. And if U.S. policy does not change, and I'm not saying that U.S. policy would necessarily get Israel to stop what it's doing. I don't know that there is something that could do that. But the fact that it's an open question is because we haven't done it. Yeah. So if there's nothing that changes in U.S. policy, um, A, I'm not convinced that like this is going to be so far in the rearview mirror that people are going to forget about it. I'm, I mean, who knows? If someone who wants to tell me yeah. like why they think this war is going to end, why uh, Israel is going to stop this onslaught, and you know, particularly each time the U.S. does this, it's a signal to Netanyahu of like we're, we're not even all bark. Never mind not being any bite. We, we don't even bark that much. And where is the incentive for Netanyahu to stop? There's none. Because then also if he stops, then there's the potential for new elections. It's actually every disincentive unless the, the United States provides an incentive to stop. And or, there, or, or, and, and, yeah. and the and and the incentive that the US would provide would be more or less like basically a signal to the Israeli people that this is being mishandled and you need to uh you, you need to essentially the uh, public opinion needs to change there. I mean and again the the Israel has its own almost self-sustaining kind of arm situation to a degree where they could they could keep this up for a while but what is even more valuable is US diplomatic support. Yep. And the the this display in front of the United Nations when they, you know, uh, Linda Thomas Greenfield uh, abstains and grimaces as she does it. And then two hours later says that the U.N. ceasefire resolution is non-binding. That is an anachronism. And it's also an insult to like the spirit of the United Nations, which I know is a Western construction and the. Uh, allies at the end of the war had a huge hand in it and it's completely tilted against the global south but if we but were it's gonna, more democratic but, now than it was then but if we're going to build on anything internationally to make it so that like we have created a just world the united states should be at the bare minimum not undercutting the very concept of u.n security council's supremacy uh in matters of this one based on its own kind of arrogant bloviation about its commitment to this settler colonial project in the middle east and, and wait does wait does someone finds out that it, the uh israel exists because of the u.n right <laughs> right like i mean that is the amazing thing about this Again, a more yeah, a less they can choose which uh, resolutions. One eighty one, I got no problem with that one. It's just like two forty two, and it's well, they started letting a lot of more countries in after that. Yeah. Um. But we wonder why we weren't able to uh, mobilize the world against Russia. It's because we don't, we aren't sincere about any of this shit. We're just not about like global democracy and all that stuff like this is this was always the glaring like sort of thing that other countries are like. Mm, Maybe we oppose of the using war to uh, change borders, but America is not serious about any of this. And, you know, I, I think um, I read somewhere, you know, that the, the, the video that was released of Israel droning those four boys who were clearly unarmed. I mean, maybe they had a pen, maybe they had a knife on them, but, you know, I mean, clearly I not carrying any type of uh, weapons were if they were militants of any kind uh really following a pro protocol of just sort of like strolling in the middle of a road targeted them and this is in like 4k we can see this this isn't like the video that cro caused the uproar of iraq that was shot in 2007 and leaked i think it was in 2010 um via now Chelsea Manning and WikiLeaks. That created a huge uproar. 
And in this country, that video, which showed the four boys being struck by a, um, uh, a drone strike, and then when one kid survived, walking away, partly limping, uh, it, it killed him. The, um, the uproar is happening in the rest of the world. This is the thing that I think like we're completely oblivious to in this country is that that video has gone around to everywhere and, and Israel is, aside from Israel being a, um, uh, you know, increasingly a pariah state, it's also completely undercut one of the, one of the bedrock selling points that Joe Biden was making in running for election in 2020, which yeah. is... I'm going to repair America's reputation around the world. People should Google Jordan protests, Syria protests. Look at the footage in the streets. It is, I mean, the amount of hatred towards the United States <laughs> cannot be overstated, specifically in the region that we have been extracting from for its oil and ravaging with wars and wars and bombs and drone strikes for decades at this point culminating in like our client state here essentially or this make whatever us safer? Our, our, yeah sorry this make us safer yeah supporting this around it does, the world does uh, right. make me safer going around new york what are we sacrificing this kind of safety for i think it makes everyone less unsafe it makes jewish people in this country uh less safe for us to be cons consistently conflating zionism with judaism it makes Muslim people in this country, much less safe. There have been hate crimes towards both yep. groups, in part because we uphold this fiction of Israel as, a rep as reparations for the Holocaust, and we put it within this deeply bloody and horrific historical context when, in fact, it really is just about Western might.